Hello, and thank you very much for joining me today. My name is Caleb Rothy, and I'm the Percussion Education Coordinator for WGI. I want to take a little bit of time today to talk to you about preparing for your ensemble's first performance of the season. Lots of work goes into preparing your ensemble for their first performance. You and your students at this point have no doubt spent thousands of man hours learning, rehearsing, and preparing your show. Today, though, I want to encourage you to also invest an hour or two preparing for all of the events that happen before and after your first and last notes of that first performance. This can be broken down into a couple of different uh, segments and, and areas. The first one that I want to talk about is what I consider to be the most important rehearsal of the season, and that's the rehearsal that you have where you practice getting everything on and off the floor. If this is not a current practice for your program, I would encourage you to make it one um, as quickly as, as this week or next. Um, if you have your first contest coming up on a Saturday, perhaps consider taking one of your rehearsals that week of the first show and spending a couple of hours in rehearsal preparing your students to get on and off the floor. A couple of things that I would recommend to do during this rehearsal are to start out by assigning specific jobs to specific people. Um, make sure that the same person is always responsible for setting up vibraphone number two. Make sure that the same subsection is responsible for pulling out the floor or for bringing the props in and setting them up where they're going to be. Uh, consistency is the name of the game in, in this department. What you want is a consistent setup and teardown process at every single event. The only way that that happens is if we go around and make sure that every performance Performer understands exactly what they need to be responsible for to get the group onto the floor, set up, and ready to go. Also, if you're going to be relying on parents to help you on and off the floor, I would highly recommend requiring them to be at this rehearsal. Uh, let's say it's a, maybe a Wednesday evening rehearsal before the first contest. Have all the students there, have all the parents that are going to be helping you on and off so that you can assign those responsibilities to the parents as well. And talk to them about the importance of either doing that duty at every single uh, contest or finding somebody else and training somebody else to do that. So the same person is placing the left speaker uh, where it's supposed to be every single time. Um, I would also highly recommend actually rehearsing getting on and off the floor. Uh, this is commonly overlooked by a lot of ensembles where they just explain it to their students and then the first time that their performers ever actually experience that is at the first competition when nerves are running really high. So take a little bit of time out of your rehearsal, maybe set aside 30, 45 minutes for this. Uh, have your ensemble move everything outside of your rehearsal space or, or kind of cone off a space so that it feels like that gym environment. Have them practice all funneling through one double door or the space uh, where one double door would, would take up. Have them fan out, pull the floor across, set up everything, get the front ensemble plugged in, and time them as they're doing this. You'll be appalled at how long it takes them the first time. You'll bring everybody back together, though, and discuss uh, where the bottlenecks were and how the process can be improved. Do now a second rep of getting onto the floor. They'll cut their time in half, they'll cut it in half again, and you'll eventually get them down to about a two, two and a half minute setup, maybe even faster than that, depending on your current configuration. This is also the place where we want to troubleshoot some problems. Have we overloaded a couple of performers in the ensemble with too many responsibilities to get everything set up? If so, let's distribute that work just a little bit more evenly so that everything can get uh, set up. Sometimes there are a couple of uh, props or a couple of pieces of instrument that uh, take a little bit longer to get set up than we would have originally anticipated, and now is the time that we can troubleshoot. This is also the stage where you want to think about all the what ifs and answer that for your students. What if we get everything plugged in and uh, nothing turns on? What if there's no power? What if there's power but we don't have any sound coming out of the uh, speakers? Um, is the battery relying on a cue from the front ensemble? What if that cue doesn't happen? How will the show progress? What will happen if one of our flats falls over in the middle of the performance? This is a great time to discuss with your students all of the contingency plans to make sure that they feel prepared and confident in case disaster does strike. This is also the time where you want to work to try to avoid frantic and disorganized interest, entrances at all costs. I know it's not evaluated as part of the contest, and our judges certainly don't weigh into that, but the audience is uh, receiving information from you as soon as you cross the threshold into the arena. So you want to make sure that your students understand they are on stage as soon as they enter that room and set up as part of their performance. Uh, if they understand that ahead of time and you're able to engineer all those details, it'll really cut down on disorganization and uh, kind of frantic chaos that uh, that we all know we have seen and, and I myself have experienced with my own students many times. 
This is also a great opportunity for you to tape and label everything. Uh, make sure that things are color coded. If you're using a snake and a thousand different microphone XLR cables, uh, you want to color code these at this point or label them with numbers or letters so that uh, we have very quick setup process happening. Your own configuration will be different than everybody else's, so figure out what works for you. I've also seen a lot of groups um, label all of their flats or all of their props as well so that any parent um, would immediately from the back side of the props understand what the order and the sequence is without having to run around and see if they've got the, uh, the picture right from the front sideline. All right, the next aspect that I want to talk to you about after we've had the most important rehearsal of the season, the one where we practice getting in, getting out, and making sure that we're as smooth and fluid in our setup and our exit routine as we are with the actual uh, notes and, 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 um, and, and visual aspects that we've prepared for, for the performance. Um, now what we want to do is we want to prepare for the actual show day. I recommend developing a show day schedule um, that is then distributed to everybody as a way to make sure that everybody knows the game plan and they know the timetables for the day. So uh, create a document that's going to list what our arrival times are, um, what their changing times are, unload, warm up, move to the, the arena, performance, return to the truck, pack up, uh, awards, all that kind of stuff. This both gets your students and your performers on the same page and understanding what their protocol and the routine is going to be there and is an invaluable tool for parents that wanna help and wanna assist or may just wanna be there um, to support their, their children. So this is especially uh, helpful for parents and if it's not already part of your routine, I would highly recommend that you adopt that for this season. The other beautiful part of this is if you create one master schedule where you decide this is how long we need to unload, this is how long we need to warm up, you now have a master schedule that can be edited week to week. You can just plug in the new performance time and back up all of your times after that. If you build it in something like Excel, you can use formulas that will automatically uh, calculate all of those numbers for you. Uh, so it's a wonderful way to help organize the whole entire um, uh, program and organization and make sure that that, that show day goes that much more smoothly. All right, the next step for us is we're done with all the preparation and it is actually now the day of the show. What I would recommend is getting to the show site early. See if you can have yourself or another staff member arrive before the rest of the ensemble. When you get there early, do a walkthrough of the entire campus. Make sure that you go to the check-in area, you figure out the plan and, and kind of the, uh, the lay of the land for the day. I would recommend doing a walkthrough at least by yourself. You could also do this with your students if you'd like to so that they can kind of get a feel for the access ways around campus. Um, at this point, you'll want to plan all of your pathways around campus, where are your instruments going to go, where are your props going to go, where are the different easements that are going to be beneficial for you, um, what's going to be the most efficient route so that you're not wasting time in transport. This is also a great time to walk over to the actual uh, arena. I would always recommend measuring the doors, bring a tape measure with you, make sure that they're as large as you were expecting them to be. Um, you don't wanna find that out as you're about to go onto the arena floor. So if you know that in advance, uh, you can make some plans ahead of time. You wanna double check the flow in and out of the gym areas as well. This is always published in advance, at least at WGI contests, and I'm assuming at your local contests as well. Um, but you always want to make sure that, that the map that you receive that says, hey, the entrance door is going to be the northwest corner and we're going to exit out of the southeast corner. You want to make sure that that is still accurate the day of the show. So uh, the only way to do that is with a walkthrough. Um, the other thing that I'd like you to do here is this gives you a chance to troubleshoot any anticipated issues early. If you've got a prop or something like that that's not going to fit through one of the doors or it's gonna have an awkward angle turning down a particular hallway, this gives you a chance to figure out what your game plan is gonna be and to also work with the, um, the event sponsors there and the admin that's on site uh, to make sure that everything is gonna go uh, according to plan uh, and as smoothly as possible. After you've walked the, the campus and kind of gotten a feel for everything, what I then would like you to do and would highly recommend is to gather all of your students and your performers together and go over the game plan. Show them the campus map, show them the gym map, um, tell them what we're going to be doing in terms of our, uh, our approach to the gym and also prep them with what is the game plan immediately afterwards. Where is the floor folding area? Where are we going to put our instruments so that they're not blocking any other groups? Um, what is the plan to return to the truck? and load the truck. Um, having a plan for all of this and making sure that every single person knows what the game plan is, is going to be invaluable to make sure that your first contest is as smooth as possible. 
Last thing I want to do is talk a little bit about on the floor. This is always a highly stressful time. At least I know it always was for me, whether it was the first show or the last show of the season. Uh, I always wanted things to go really, really well, uh, and they don't always. And, and, and we all know that we've all had that experience at some point. The number one piece of advice I have is to remain calm. No matter what happens, you've got to make sure that you remain calm and allow the students to, to kind of um, see your calmness. That's going to be reassuring to them, and it's going to help us get uh, any catastrophes unraveled that much more quickly. So keep your students calm. Project positivity. Even if something is not working, if the sound system didn't work as expected, or if one of the props is malfunctioning inside, uh, project positivity. Don't dwell on that. Make sure that um, you're not letting your students dwell on that either. Uh, hype them up for the performance that you want them to have that day. Finally, my last piece of advice is this. It's not going to be perfect. The first show never is. There's going to be a number of different things that you'd like to do better. And every year you get a chance to do this again and again, you're going to likely make it better. Always in the pursuit of perfection, but probably never uh, achieved. Just remember, the first show of the season is an important first step, but it is not your end result. Keep your mind focused on what your goals are for the end of the season. But don't forget to enjoy the journey. Just because the first performance isn't perfect uh, doesn't mean it's not an invaluable part of your season. There's only going to be one first performance this year, and you want to make sure that it's the best it possibly can be. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you found this very, very helpful. If you have any additional questions for me, or if there are any additional topics that you would love to hear me discuss and share a little bit of information on, I am all ears. I would absolutely love to hear from you. Uh, my email address is caleb, C-A-L-E-B, at WGI.org. Feel free to email me with anything you need. I'm here as a resource for you and want to help you have the best season you possibly can. Thank you so much for tuning in today.